toast, man. <laughs> you know, I never can depend on these, but you show me how professional things can truly be. Ain't no need in going in harassing average folk and causing even more of a panic. We got in, we went straight to the vault, and everything went smoothly. We even hopped off the train before it fully even stopped. <laughs> Sheriff's probably still knee deep in the creek looking for us. Well, I mean, I was just a lookout. I mean, it was you running the show. Well, I guess I just took for granted how hotheads could really fuck up a train job. You get some old geezer who wants to wag his finger at you right when you're holding up a place, and some people I work with just take it too goddamn personal. <laughs> I mean, who the fuck cares what they're telling you? We're the ones with the guns, right? <laughs> they should be listening to us. <laughs> right. Uh, Clyde, have, have you ever killed anyone yourself personally? Oh, you bet I have. Is that including the war? <laughs> well, I mean, I must confess my hands are clean on both accounts. I mean, I, I was raised to be a blacksmith. I mean, though I did grow up around guns, of course, being raised in Virginia like yourself. Well, actually, I'm from Tennessee. My daddy moved me to Charlottesville when I was about six years old. And I grew up seeing a Monticello, reading about Thomas Jefferson. Frankly, I don't think that he would stand for all this reconstruction bullshit nowadays. Just another way for the North to keep on stealing from the South. <laughs> they gotta remember now. That's right, you told me uh, you, you moved out of Virginia right before the war started. Where'd you move to? Well, that was uh, Wayne County, West Virginia. West Virginia? <laughs> How did I not hang you on the spot, you traitor? <laughs> well, you were drunk, remember? I mean, you were talking loudly at the bar the other night. I was the son of a bitch dumb enough to volunteer. I mean, it is not every day you get a proposition from a nationally notorious outlaw like yourself. <laughs> well, lucky you. It would appear so. <laughs> so how'd you end up in West Virginia? Well, I, I moved when I was 15. My brother was 18. We were all Quakers, you know, against slavery. Sounds like a bunch of fruitcakes. Whatever happened to your real folk? Well, they, they went out west during the gold rush right after I was born, and they never returned. Never heard from them. I mean, it is it's very difficult to think about after all this time. We assume they must have died somehow, probably from starvation, trying to make it back here, not a cent in their pocket. Pity. At least they died for what they believed in. What brings you back to your old stomping grounds then? Well, I'm looking for my brother. I mean, well, his grave at least, as he was the eldest. And, well, he went off to fight in the war and I, I stayed back to uh, look after my uncle. He had pneumonia. And your brother, he fought for the Union side, I take it? That is right. Well. I've never been okay with a fucking Yankee before, but I can tell you this much. You sure do know how to rob a train. <laughs> Please, Clyde. I'm too humbled to take credit for your ingenuity. Well, mm -hmm. I think it takes a certain amount of courage to take on my whatever you want to call it. I can't argue with that. <laughs> so, enough about me. I mean, what's your story? other than all the wanted posters that I've seen in the papers. Well, I guess I've had my fair share of run-ins with the law all over the country, as you know. But they can never keep me locked up for long. Confederates have brothers in arms all over the country, especially in the jails. <sighs> they can never keep me locked up for more than a couple of days. But, if you must know the whole story, I was caught by the Union in Gettysburg. It was fucking chaos. I've never seen so much blood in my life. I'm shocked I even made it out of their life. Barely even a scratch. Woo! Look at me. But, I knew it. When I got out of Camp Douglas, Illinois, a place that I'd never even been to before, I had to start fresh. I was always pickpocketing and 
doing small time stuff when I was a kid, but I needed something good. So I started with the banks. Now, I could have been greedy. I could have went town to town, but I went state to state, really making sure that my scores counted for something here. Then, the real gold mine hit. The Transcontinental Railroad. <laughs> now, these guys, they would move the money around for me, take it to a spot that I think is real easy, and I would take them for everything that they got. <laughs> no law enforcement inside to stop me. I mean, well, it's not like killing them was ever a problem for you anyway, right? You're a bit peculiar, ain't you? Well, how do you mean? Why are you all of a sudden interested in all this crime? Well, a straight-laced guy like yourself. Well, I mean, you're right. I am just a good old country blacksmith, traveling around from place to place. I mean, not to mention the hotel I stayed at in town. It was quite costly. Cost had to come down on someone and I would not let my aunt pay. Although she does intend to come, you know, pay her respects to see my brother, I couldn't force any more of an economic burden on her. Yeah. So what's your explanation? You went all the way out of state to clang some metal together for a job? Oh, you have a family, don't you? A wife and two little girls. Do you talk about your day at work with them? How many trains you may have robbed? I mean, are they just not the kind to ask too many questions? You better watch it, bud. You're starting to make me suspicious. Well, I, I don't see why. I, I have just as much of a motivation to return home as you do. I wouldn't do anything to endanger that. Yeah, and what would you do to get there? And make damn sure that you do. Sell a man out? Shoot him in the back? And you wouldn't? You'll know a goddamn thing about me, Walter. I don't even know how I let a stranger in on this job, let alone a fucking Yankee. Well, perhaps it speaks to your own desperation. What? Become less cautious over the years, start bending the rules, and then you trust people you shouldn't trust. You got something you want to say to me, boy? Clyde, you have nothing to lose by killing me. You do have my cut of the money to gain from it. I mean, there's no use begging for my life. Taking it's within your power, if you'd like to take it, you can right now. Then why are you so calm right now? Aren't you afraid to die? No, it's for the right reasons. And what would those be? I told you, I'm trying to provide for my family. And I am too, what's your point? My point is, I'm choosing to trust you just as much as you're choosing to trust me. I mean, this little hideout in the woods, secluded enough to make any of us disappear without a trace. But I mean, if I were to kill you, there'd be no point in hiding your body. I'd just go in town and collect that reward money. But sooner or later, it'd probably put me in hot water for that robbery we just pulled. Someone would recognize me. And what's stopping you from killing me and stealing my cut? Other than your own gun being pointed at you. Because I'm an honest man. And what I have now is all I require. And you expect me to believe that? If you say so, Walter. Let me ask you something. How far away from town are we? Let's say seven or eight miles, give or take. Anybody else know about this here, Cap? Just my aunt and uncle. I mean, thank God it hasn't been broken into all these years. Yeah, lucky us. I think we're too close to town. I got a buddy out in North Carolina. I said we'd steal some horses and we'd work our way towards him. But you really think that's wise? We're going to be very careful. C Clyde, since this place does have sentimental value to me, I mean, I prefer to stay, but you do whatever you please. I ain't asking. We move together. And why is that? Because I can't take the chance of you rolling over on me once you get caught. I find that very unlikely. If I stay here, I mean, you on the other hand are putting yourself more at risk. I can handle myself. 
we got to watch out because folks around here are going to start searching the area. Clyde, I thank you for the opportunity, but I don't owe you anymore. All right. Fine. You want to stay? Go ahead, stay. I'm going to get the fuck out of Dodge then. We should have left hours ago. Oh, and why didn't you? I should shut the fuck up before I shoot you in the face. <laughs> when I walk out those doors, I don't ever want to see your face again. just ran into the trees with his long gun to snipe every single one of you sons of bitches. So if you give up now, I'll make sure he goes easy on you. I ain't here to make a deal. I'm here to bring you in dead or alive. Don't make no difference to me. Well, I ain't leaving this here cabin. So you're gonna have to come on in here and make me. We got all night out here, Clyde. We tracked you this far. We ain't gonna quit now. You must be insane if you think that I'm giving up that easy. You take all the time you need to think about it. Oh, believe me, I will. You best get comfortable, Sheriff. Oh, shit. Well, brother number three, looks like we got a long night ahead of us. Still out there? What do you say we both go into town, have a cup of coffee, and talk about this like Jim? All right, sir. Fuck you then. <laughs> 